Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the Low Speeds live class. Let's go ahead and mute everybody. All right, we'll get started. Here we go, ready? Let's start off with some common words. Month, pros, sign, thing, morning, protest, silk, thought, mother, pole, silver, thunder, motion, punishment, sister, time, <clears throat> mountain, purpose, size, tin, move, push, sky, top, music, quality, sleep, touch, name, question, slip, trade, nation, rain, slope, transport, need, range, smash, trick, news, rate, smell, trouble, night, ray, smile, turn, noise, reaction, smoke, twist, Note, reading, sneeze, unit, number, reason, snow, use, observation, record, soap, value. All right. Now I've got some Tangle Tamers. Here we go. Alternately pressing. Quietly persuaded. Inadequately explained. Peripherally evident. Accessories available. Radiology department. Foreign exchange student, physical therapist, constantly misread, discriminating consumers, extensive amenities, professional community, suburban campground, Hand-painted walls. International symbolism. Microwave combinations. Recently distributed. And threatened species. All right. Now, I'm going to give you some medical words along with their definitions. I've given this in the mid and the high speed class, and so if you've heard it, that's why, but it's very important that you guys hear this, so that's why I repeat it once in every class, okay? All right, here we go. Cortex, the external gray layer of the brain. Coronary, encircling as a vessel or a nerve. Collie's fracture, transverse fracture of the lower extremity of the radius with displacement of the hand backward and outward. Coccyx, the last bone of the spinal column. Coagulate, to clot. Cervical vertebra, the upper seven bones of the spinal column. 
cerebrospinal fluid. Fluid of the brain and spinal cord. Cerebral, of or pertaining to the brain. Carotids, the principal arteries of the neck. Crepitus, a crackling sound produced by rubbing together fragments of fractured bone. Cyanotic, pertaining to the blue discoloration of skin from non-oxidation of blood. Debreed, to cut away lacerated or contaminated tissue. Decalcified, freed from lime salts. Diastolic, pertaining to the period of dilation of the heart. Diathermy, heating local tissue by the aid of the high frequency current. Dilated, a vessel or organ which has expanded. Disseminated, scattered. Distal, away from the center of the body. Echimosis, discoloration due to an effusion of blood into surrounding tissues after a rupture of the vessels. Embolus, any foreign or abnormal particle circulating in the blood as a bubble of air or a blood clot. Epiphysis, a part or process of a bone which ossifies separately and subsequently becomes a part of the larger bone. Epiphyseal, pertaining to an epiphysis. Epithelium, the covering of the skin and mucous membranes consisting wholly of cells <clears throat> of varying forms and arrangements. All right. Now, I've got a drill here that focuses on, focuses on the and it, called the the it drill. Here we go. Pay it, top it, say it, the dog, the cat, the job. Tame it, time it, tape it, keep it, tip it, the wit, Set it, the ham, boil it, kick it, the cap, cut it, name it, pat it, hit it, wet it, the cup, the rat, the pal, turn it, sell it, pass it. Lug it, the bag, 
tap it, the hut, eat it, the pit, grow it, the case, pace it, the cab, row it, the egg, the type, hear it, the race, let it, tag it, the hay, peg it, the lot, rub it, the rag, ask it, the keg, meet it, the safe, call it. All right. Now, automobile terms. Here we go. Floor carpets, radio settings, light switch, trunk lock, tire pressure, turning lights, dome light, spare tire, wheel covers, vent operation, exhaust valve, heater outlets, intake manifold, cigarette lighter. All right. Now, I've got some consonant compounds. And these focus on the initial FL. And these are in sentences. Here we go. Ready? Flirtatious Floridans fly fleetly. Florence was a flippant floor walker. Fireflies fly flippantly. Fleeting flesh colored flippers fly floppily. Mrs. Mitchell's florists use floppy flood lights. Fleet footed flatters flounce floppingly. Floridians are floating flirters. He set out the flares with flare. Flyers like to fly over flagpoles. Our flag flew over the flesh pots. He flipped over her flirting. Your flamboyance is a little flaky. The flapper flippantly flourished her flesh. <clears throat> the flagship flew its flags fleetly. <clears throat> Flagging a train is flashy but flippant. Flawless flaxseed is flavorless. Flagrancy, or excuse me, the flagrancy of the flaken was flaccid. Flat-footed people have flattened feet that flop. Florists used flowers for floral arrangements. The flashing floodlights flickered and fluctuated. All right.
Now, I've got a fun little, actually, before I start this fun little literary story, I almost forgot to give you your names and addresses. Let me give you those real quick. There we go. Mr. Frederick P. Logan, Jr. Warren County School, 15th Street, Front, Colorado, 80201. Gwen R. Russ, R-U-S-S, -S, Lake Taylor High School, 1384 Kempsville Road, Norfolk, Virginia, 23502. Marie Waldron Ryder, R Y D E R Kittany Regional High School Route 4 Halsey Myrtle Grove Newton New Jersey 07860 Irene W Vatano V A T T A N O two zero seven Pell Circle Urbana, Illinois six one eight zero one Gail O Mason M A S O N nine zero five South Fifth Street, St. Peter, Oregon, 97216. J.S. Massey, M-A-S-S-E-Y, West Philadelphia High School, 47th and Walnut Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19139. Cynthia M. Schumerman, S-C-H-E-U-M-E-R-M-A-N, 3438, South Granada Avenue, Spring Valley, California, 92078. Barbara J. Fluel, F-L-E-W-E-L-L, -E -L -L. 21 Linham Road. Stamford, Connecticut, 06903. Mrs. Annette C. Tarleton, T A R L T O N, Bowman High School, P.O. Box 513, Wadesboro, North Carolina. 28170. All right. Now we're going to do a fun little drill for our literary. This comes from a, the Cat in the Hat book. I'm going to start at 60 and work my way to 100. And you want to focus on accuracy, even if it doesn't make sense. Here we go. Knox in box, fox in socks, Knox on fox, in socks, in box, socks on Knox, and Knox in box, fox in socks, on box, on 
knocks. Chicks with bricks come. Chicks with blocks come. Chicks with bricks and blocks and clocks come. Look, sir. Look, sir. Mr. Knox, sir. Let's do tricks with bricks and blocks, sir. Let's do tricks with chicks and clocks, sir. First, I'll make a quick trick brick stack. Then I'll make a quick trick block stack. You can make a quick trick chick stack. You can make a quick trick clock stack. And here's a new trick, Mr. Knox. Socks on chicks and chicks on fox. Fox on clocks, on bricks and blocks. Bricks and blocks, on knocks, on box. Now we come to ticks and talks, sir. Try to say this, Mr. Knox, sir. Clocks on fox, tick. Clocks on Knox, talk. Six sick bricks, tick. Six sick chicks, talk. Please, sir, I don't like this trick, sir. My tongue isn't quick or slick, sir. I get all those ticks and clocks, sir, mixed up with the chicks and talks, sir. I can't do it, Mr. Fox, sir. I'm so sorry, Mr. Knox, sir. Here's an easy game to play. Here's an easy thing to say. New socks, two socks. Whose socks? Sue's socks. Who sews whose socks? Sue sews Sue's socks. Who sees who sew? Whose new socks, sir? You see Sue sew. Sue's new socks, sir. That's not easy, Mr. Fox, sir. Who comes? Crow comes. Slow Joe Crow comes. Who sews Crow's clothes? Sue sews crow's clothes. Slow Joe Crow sews whose clothes? Sue's clothes. Sue sews socks of fox in socks now. Slow Joe Crow sews knocks in box now. Sue sews rose on Slow Joe Crow's clothes. Fox sews hose on Slow Joe Crow's nose. Hose goes, rose grows, nose hose goes some. Crow's rose grows some. Mr. Fox, I hate this game, sir. This game makes my tongue quite lame, sir. Mr. Knox, sir. What a shame, sir. We'll find something new to do now. Here is lots of new blue goo now. 
new goo, blue goo, gooey, gooey, blue goo, new goo, gluey, gluey, gooey goo for chewy, chewy. That's what that goo goose is doing. Do you choose to chew goo too, sir? If, sir, you, sir, choose to chew, sir, with the goo goose, chew, sir, do, sir. Mr. Fox, sir, I won't do it. I can't say it. I won't chew it. Very well, sir. Step this way. We'll find another game to play. Bim comes. Bin comes. Bim brings Ben broom. Ben brings Bim broom. Ben br Ben's brims broom. Bim Ben's Ben's broom. Bim's Ben's 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 bent broom breaks. Bim's bent broom breaks. Ben's band, Bim's band. Big bands, pig bands. Bim and Ben lead bands with brooms. Ben's band bangs and Bim's band booms. Pig band, boom band, big band, broom band. My poor mouth can't say that. No, sir. My poor mouth is much too slow, sir. Well then, bring your mouth this way. I'll find it something it can say. Luke, luck, likes lakes. Luke's duck likes lakes. Luke, luck, licks lakes. Luke's duck licks lakes. Duck takes licks. In lakes, Luke, luck, likes. Luck, luck, takes licks. In lakes, ducks, likes. I can't blab such blibber blubber. My tongue isn't made of rubber. Mr. Knox, now, come now, come now. You don't have to be so dumb now. Try to say this. Mr. Knox, please, through three cheese trees, three free fleas flew. While these fleas flew, freezy breeze blew. Freezy breeze made these three trees freeze. Freezy trees made these trees cheese freeze. That's what made these three free Fleas sneeze. Stop it, stop it. That's enough, sir. I can't say such silly stuff, sir. Very well then, Mr. Knox, sir. Let's have a little talk about Tweedle Beetles. What do you know about Tweedle Beetles? Well, when Tweedle Beetles fight, it's called a Tweedle Beetle battle. And when they battle in a puddle, it's a tweetle beetle puddle battle. And when tweetle beetles battle with paddles in a puddle, they call it a tweetle beetle puddle paddle battle. And when beetles battle beetles in a puddle paddle battle, and the beetle battle puddle is a puddle in a bottle. They call this a tweetle beetle bottle puddle paddle battle muddle. And when beetles fight these battles in a bottle with their paddles and the bottles on a poodle and the poodles eating noodles, they call this a muddle puddle tweetle poodle beetle noodle bottle paddle battle and 
Now wait a minute, Mr. Sox Fox. When a fox is in the water or bottle where the Tweedle Beetles battle with their paddles in a puddle on a noodle eating poodle, this is what they call a Tweedle Beetle Noodle Poodle Bottled Paddled Muddled Duddled Fuddled Waddled Fox in Socks Sir. Fox in Socks, our game is done, sir. Thank you for a lot of fun, sir. Good practice there. That's a good finger exercise practice. All right. Moving on to jury charge. Something not so silly. Here we go. These are plaintiff's closing arguments. Here we go. Let's see. Four. Okay, we're going to get on time. Now, on the direct examination of Mr. Meso, we went into a lengthy questioning session. We took him all the way back to the past 20 years in his employment. We showed how he started out as an apprentice electrician. Before that, labor, how he was in the service, how he did heavy labor and skilled type labor, which required him to use his arms above his head. We did that, ladies and gentlemen, for a purpose, not only to show what I consider <clears throat> to be a very credible history of a fine gentleman in the true American tradition. But we did that, ladies and gentlemen, for the purpose of showing that Mr. Meso was working with that arm and doing heavy work pain-free, without any limitations, putting in many, many hours of overtime work. Ladies and gentlemen, there is not one iota of evidence that Mr. Meso had pain in that shoulder or in the neck before the injury in this case. So we suggest in accordance with my comments a little earlier about what to do when there is an inconsistency or contradiction, we suggest that when a physician renders an opinion but gives no basis, in fact, for that opinion, and furthermore, where there is no basis in the record for that opinion, that that opinion does not deserve recognition. Dr. Connor, in this regard again, he was called as an expert at the last moment. The plaintiff was claiming an injury to the cervical spine. In the cervical spine, let's face it, 
what is bothering this gentleman is not, are not x-ray findings. Yes, there were x-ray findings on the shoulder. He got along very well with that arm through the years. It is the pain that has resulted from the injury of this case. It is the pain that keeps him up nights that causes him to go into traction that limits him in his physical activities at home and on the job, pain in the neck, radiating outward, numbness in the hand. <clears throat> so when this gentleman is sent to an expert for the purpose of giving an opinion and analysis of what extent he was injured in that accident and what extent of claims of neck injury and neck pain were valid, naturally, you would expect a physician to give an opinion about his neck pain. Dr. Connor testified that he was not giving any opinion about Mr. Meso's neck pain. He did not have any opinion. The test that Dr. Connor took is entirely consistent, entirely consistent. That was an objective test that was done by way of needles. And I'm not going to go through the manner that the test was done. We all heard comments about it a few times in this trial. But the point is that Mr. Meso is not only demonstrating atrophy of the shoulder, girdle muscles on a visual inspection, but in addition, the test that Dr. Connor gave was positive. Dr. Connor testified that there was severe nerve damage. On cross-examination, he located the origin of the nerves that were damaged. Where? Do you recall his answer? At C5, at C5. C5, of course, refers to the cervical spine, a root nerve in the cervical spine. So ladies and gentlemen, I believe that the medical testimony that you heard does establish the burden that Mr. Meso had to meet with reference to what took place anatomically at the time of the accident, the extent of his injuries, the need for treatment, his disability from work, his need for future treatments, and ongoing disability. Now at this time, I would like to undertake a discussion of the value of the damages Mr. Meso suffered. All right. Let me just date this so I know we covered it. Let's move into Q&A on the light board. All right.
And it looks like defense is going to start out. I'm going to start at 60, work my way to 100. Okay. All right, here we go. Ready? Were you given a prescription medication by anybody since June of 2011? No. We are excluding, I'll go through that. Other than the procardia? No. You were given the heart medication, correct? Yes. Okay, you were prescribed heart medication? Yes. Do you know who the doctor is that prescribed the heart medication for you at County Hospital? Dr. Cantrell. Between June of 2011 and one month ago, when you went to see Dr. Rose, have you been seen by any other medical doctor or chiropractor? I was seen by a chiropractor shortly after the accident for about a month approximately. Who was that with, ma'am? I think the doctor's name was Dr. Sackett. Can you spell that without guessing? Well, he turned the business over to another doctor after I started going. And then I didn't go anymore after a month. Do you know where Dr. Sackett's office was? I don't know. It was on Arrowhead Avenue. I don't know the number. I think it was 19th and Arrow. I was going to ask you what street was closest because having been 50 years in San Bernardino, you probably know the numbers of the streets. I know the streets, but there are many new streets I don't know too, because I don't get around like I did when I was young. It's still growing. It isn't the little family place it used to be. Council, just to quickly get rid of one whole area, is there any claim for lost earnings or capacity? No, I mean, you're not making, you didn't lose any money from work. She's been retired for years. I've been retired for 10 years. I worked until I was 69. What did you do? The last four years, I worked for state employment development. I was an older worker specialist, a job appointed by the state. Well, let's talk a little bit about what actually happened on July 17, 2011. Do you recall what time of day or close to the time of day 
it was when you were injured. It was early afternoon, as close as I can recall, probably between one and two in the afternoon. Were you on foot that afternoon? Yes. Where had you been? I was coming home or from my home and crossed the street there to go to Desert Industries, which was on the corner of Highland and Mountain View, but they are no longer there. They've moved since then. They moved to Cala Mesa. Desert Industries is a thrift store. So you were walking from your house and your plan was to go to Desert Industries to shop? Yes, to browse around. Were you carrying anything in your hands on your way to Desert Industries? My purse. Other than your purse, were you carrying anything else? No. Do you wear prescription eyeglasses of any type? Only for reading. Other than that, you're still able to see as well as ever? Yes, except that I was shocked when Dr. Rose told me my right eye was blurring, and also the doctor at county that does my blood pressure examined it and said my right eye was blurring after that. Was anyone walking on June 17 with you? No. You were walking by yourself? Yes. Did you have to cross Highland Avenue to get to the Desert Thrift Store? Yes. Is there a crosswalk at the corner of Highland and Mountain View? Yes. Are there traffic signals at that intersection? There are traffic signals, yes. Are there pedestrian walk signals? No. Just red lights and green lights? Red lights and green lights. But no pedestrian walk signals? No. I don't mean to be facetious, but do you know what I mean when I say pedestrian walk signals? Yes, that's where you push the button and it turns green or it blinks orange at you. Yes, I have seen them. And you're saying that in June of 2011, there were not pedestrian walk signals? No, they still don't have any there at Highland and Mountain View. Okay, when you arrived at the intersection of Highland and Mountain View, what color was the light in your direction? The color of the light in the direction I was going was green. And did you just then continue walking down the sidewalk and into the street on a green light? Yes. Do you know how long the light had been green before you stepped from the curb into the roadway? When I stepped from the curb, it had just changed to green. That is really what my question was before, although asked in a clouded, sort of way. So did you have to wait on the curb 
for the light to turn green or did it just happen to do that? That I can't recall. Can you describe your gait as you walk? Are you a brisk walker or are you a stroller? I am quite a slow walker. Is that because with age, walking has become more difficult? Yes, it is slightly more difficult because of my age. I am not flitting around like I used to as fast as I used to. I used to be very active. Is there an island or median in Highland Avenue at Mountain View? To the north beyond Highland Avenue on Mountain View, yes, there is an island. All right, so let's do some read back. Right. I'm going to read this once at 100, then again at 80, last time at 60, okay? It's defense questioning. Here we go. Was any surgery performed upon you? No, they didn't even sew up the cuts. After your hospitalization, did you return home? No, I was transferred to St. Thomas, which was closer to home. How long were you at St. Thomas? Around a week. I don't recollect just exactly. What doctors treated you? while you were at St. Thomas. Dr. Needham, does he have a particular type of specialty? Yes, neurosurgery. Was surgery performed on you at St. Thomas? No, I had a lot of tests. After your stay at St. Thomas, did you return home? Yes. How long of a period of convalescence did you spend at home? I was at home with a tutor for the first semester of my senior year of high school and until March or April of the next year. When did you return to school on a normal basis? April, but I can't remember the day. All right, so let's do that again at 80. Here we go. Was any surgery performed upon you? No. They didn't even sew up the cuts. After your hospitalization, did you return home? No, I was transferred to St. Thomas, which was closer to home. How long were you at St. Thomas? Around a week? I don't recollect just exactly. What doctors treated you while you were at St. Thomas? Dr. Needham, does he have a particular type of specialty? Yes, neurosurgery. Was surgery performed on you at St. Thomas? No, I had a lot of tests. After your stay at St. Thomas, 
Did you return home? Yes. How long of a period of convalescence did you spend at home? I was at home with a tutor for the first semester of my senior year of high school and until March or April of the next year. When did you return to school on a normal basis? April, but I can't remember the day. All right, so let's do it one last time at 60. Here we go. Was any surgery performed upon you? No, they didn't even sew up the cuts. After your hospitalization, did you return home? No, I was transferred to St. Thomas which was closer to home. How long were you at St. Thomas? Around a week. I don't recollect just exactly. What doctors treated you while you were at St. Thomas? Dr. Needham. Does he have a particular type of specialty? Yes, neurosurgery. Was surgery performed on you at St. Thomas? No, I had a lot of tests. After your stay, at St. Thomas, did you return home? Yes. How long of a period of convalescence did you spend at home? I was at home with a tutor for the first semester of my senior year of high school and until March or April of the next year. When did you return to school? On a normal basis. April, but I can't remember the day. All right, well, since we don't have any students in the live class, I'm going to have you just go back and watch the recording. Uh, choose which readback you would like to select, or you can watch all three and compare the readback with your notes, okay? So that concludes our live class. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon.